don't plan to do a road version at the moment. But maybe we will. But, um, I know you will. Uh, no, seriously, but we are no, we're going GT4 racing uh, next year. Right, moment of truth, guys. What well, a moment of truth for seeing the car and how fabulous it is. So you pop one there, open the door out. Hi guys, A from Witch Bike here. Got my son filming on this glorious day in Goodwood. Lotus stand behind me. I've not looked up and seen anything on it. I've just seen it and got really excited. As you know, got two deposits down of the V6 and the AMD four cylinder. Um, chance to be getting both of them about 88 5 percent uh, really comes down to how it's going to drive and the configurable options that we're going to get because there are other options that i can go for but i'm definitely definitely getting the v6 because of that open gate gearbox whether there's one to stand i don't know but uh, i'm well excited when i turn around i'm gonna start giggling so let's go and have a look at it let's go look at it very prominent muscular arches oh my first glance look at that well oh my god here she is I must admit, this blue looks better in the flesh than it did in the pictures and TV. Again, you can see a slight metallic fleck. I thought it was quite a flat blue. Obviously, what you've got is, is kind of the light shining down it, which will change it somewhat. This is how it would look on a garage forecourt at night, when it, cars always look amazing. But if you make it in the sun hitting that, it's going to be glorious. So there's the big 20-inch wheels. These are actually optional wheels. going to be slightly more expensive than the standard ones that come with the car, I believe. Well, the V6 might get them a standard. This has got the black pack roof. To be something truly special, it has to do with So that'd be good to come in carbon, that might be an extra. There's that mirror first edition plaque. How cool is that? Never see that again, not exactly like that. They'll probably change that to a Union Jack at some point. Huge brakes. I think carbon ceramics will likely be an option. Oh my god, it's amazing. This, this looks so much better in, in the flesh. It looks wider. I don't have a pictures compress it. The rear splitter. Beautifully detailed exhausts. Fabulous. Wicked tail lights. So this is the four cylinder because it's covered up. Now this V6 is less covered. And you can see some moving parts when you're in the car. So that's a bit of a shame. That's not kind of on show and kind of aesthetically pleasing. Bloody mild, isn't it? I do like those wheels. A lot of people, it's about 50-50. I think they're amazing. And the way that the spokes go into the rim gives, makes it look even bigger. It makes it look like a 21-inch wheel. I think they're stunning. It's good that they've got kind of a unique looking wheel. That mileage zero. <laughs> well, let's see if I can get to sit in it. Here's the front side view. Amazing. I love how you walk up, you immediately see this Lotus badging in the cockpit. It, looks, it actually looks really impressive. And the yellow stitching with the yellow central stripe on the steering really pops out. Looks amazing. I do hope I can get inside it. No one else seems to be allowed so far, but uh, I'm wearing my press credentials. Lotus, marvellous, wow. <laughs> I, don't think it, I don't think this car's got a bad angle. I think they're all amazing. Here's this boomerang front slip, look at that. So the air comes in there, gets forced out there, once going through the cooling features in there, the radiators, amazing. Well, it looked like black on the telly, but it's actually, looks like very dark gray. This has got the different wheels. These are the standard wheels, uh, the wheels that we saw are actually option lectures on the four and the six I've been told unfortunately so uh, that's a bit more money to spend but uh, yeah it actually looks fabulous I think it looks it's gonna look better in the lighter colors it's such a pretty car it's so curvaceous I think it's gonna pop out much better in the in the lighter colors and the heavily metallic flecked cars uh, the back looks stunning in this color actually of all that of all the angles that really works this is the one that's going to be going up the hill today. That's interesting, look. It's got a totally different exhaust ending. But again, this is these are only one of 87 cars that Lotus have got in this first stage, which they're using for the testing. And they're expecting to lose 37 of those to crash testing. 
<laughs> and how depressing is that? 37 of them. It's a very expensive thing. Right, let's have a look at the engine, because you can see instantly the difference. This is the V6. And uh, as you're going along, this goes up and down. I don't know, I can't what it's called, is that or something? I don't know. Um, yes, that is better. There's actually something more to look at there, which is pretty interesting. Fabulous. And obviously, it's going to sound a lot better in a natural, untuned state than the four cylinder from AMG. This one won't have the pops and crackles. The AMG might, but you can certainly tune it in. That's not my style now. It was, but I've just grown up a bit in the last few months. So <laughs> I won't be doing that. Wow, doesn't pop out like the blue one, but uh, still amazing. There's the first edition badge on a black background. Nicely embedded in there. Right, moment of truth, guys. Well, a moment of truth of seeing the car and how fabulous it is. So you pop one there, open the door out. You see there, it's beautifully smoothed into the surface itself. Very attractive pedal. There you see this new amazing st stereo by Kef. Manual seat electric buttons here. Well, Jay, you'll get it. My son, sorry you can get in it. Oh, good grief. Oh, wow, this is nice. <laughs> this, there is a sense of absolute class in here. I think I'll go with the black and the yellow stitching. There's the space behind there. Enough for a couple of good bags. There's the view out the back. But you can see the quality and the textures. And this is the, this is the leather. Many people go for the option of the Alcantara. There's the two TFT screens. If I get down there, there's, there is the mechanism for the boxes. Brilliant. Now Lotus have admittedly almost entirely aimed this Amira at those seeking to buy a Cayman or base 911, not the GT4 Cayman. You should also worry Jaguar with their F-Type. I see similar people looking at this as another British mark with power and substance, very attractive, and might make that move. You might as well think those looking at the new GR Supra from Toyota may also be tempted by the Amira. Uh, now, the Alpine is a lot lighter, but also down on power and looks nothing like the Amira, so there's some overlap there as well. You could also take some cells from cars like the BMW M2 or M4, where people don't need the rear seats. Um, it is quite a jump for those looking at the Golf R, RS3, Yaris GR, Civic Type R and AMG A45 sort of hatchbacks. But I'm sure they'll see the extra value in this supercar looking Amira and might consider the jump, again, if they really don't need those rear seats. <laughs> This it's a mini, it's got a roof box on it, but a box opens up to sleep two people. <laughs> oh dear.
car park itself at the event was unbelievable. The supercar paddock had dozens of Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches and McLarens. But this one was my favourite because of the number plate. This is the V6 again, out in the sun. You see how it speckles out. Lotus Champ giving it a very good clean, which is nice to see. There's some right grotty showed cars here. This isn't one of them, it looks fabulous. So it's re someone's re black the tyres, very nice. Oh, caliper toys, what colour would you get? Well, red, there's red, yellow, black, and silver. Wow, look at this. Looks even better than light, doesn't it? Can't really see in there. Yeah. Yeah. Seen it in there already. Yeah, I'm not definitely won't get this colour. Yeah, you see the foil down there. Obviously helps retain the heat, pushing it back. The heated window this doesn't well this must go up so you've got the boot there which we haven't seen that must go up independently don't know how you do that you've also got to get the fluid in there and come to servicing oh you're going to start it up see yes I can't believe it. I'm what, not quite what you good. For, then you going for a V6? Or not? No, I put cars on both of them. Have you? Yeah, look, I'm with Jamie at Belen Colville. Oh, all right. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm getting one of each. Oh, wow. I want to get the iPhone, I want to get the four cylinder and probably spec it up to 450, take it on the track, ship it out, roll cage. With a V6, I want everything on it. With, the, with those lovely wheels that you can see on the other one. Yeah. It must be just so a they, they told me yesterday, I was talking to Brad, he said they've had to bring their staff in off uh, Thurlow because they've been out Really? Yeah. Someone said there's 660 only in it for the UK. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that. <laughs> yeah. We'll have a look at that. Because you said you could do two shifts. Oh, you might. Well, we could do three shifts, but... Oh, my God. We've only, we've only planned one at the moment, but I think if we have to put a second shift on for the first year, we'll have to... GT4, probably 2023? No, next year. Next year? So I've got to upgrade to that, haven't I? No. Is that going to come out straight with 430 or 450 brake? We don't know. It's V6 only, you're going to do a four cylinder as well? For the GT4? Yeah, it's going to no, be V6. Oh, V6 only. Yeah, yeah. And only, well, uh, we haven't planned to do a road version at the moment. But maybe we will. But, um, I know you will. Uh, no, seriously, but we are no, we're going GT4 racing uh, next year. So 400 surely is a sweet spot. Uh, so I mean, it's well, it's actually 416, isn't it? The V6. So it's, it's not 400, it's 416. Ah, that's good news. I'll get, I'll feed that back to the four. And um, the red looks amazing. Have you seen that in the flesh? Yeah. No. No, no one has. If you haven't seen it, no one has. No, we've got one grey one, one blue one. And that and is it? Literally? The rest of them in the factory are all like this horrible, horrible blue. Oh, because they're all crash cars. So oh, of course. Does more that make you wince? Because a 30 or 40 of those are going to get destroyed. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's Part not coming out of your bonus. So. No, I've already done one look, walk around it, sat in it. So there's a bit of you, of the linkage down there. Probably take the mesh off. But very smart. I think, I think Alcantara of yellow stitching is the way to go. Here's of course Zach Lewis's custom three years to build Koenig Zig Regera 0 to 16 2.8, 255 miles an hour and it has gold on it and diamonds. <laughs> Yes! That's good news, it sounds that good! <laughs> Welcome to...
what should we call it? Lotus Corner. Lotus Corner here on the Michelin Supercar Paddock Stand. Hope you're having a lovely festival speed. Anyone who's here at the stand, are you all having a lovely day? Yay! That's what we want to hear. So, before our very eyes on the stand is a Lotus. Maybe a Lotus you have never seen before because it's only been launched this week. It is the Lotus Emira, and I think it is a stunning bit of kit. But to tell us more about it, are the people who know a lot more than me. To start with, we have the Director of Design, Russell Carr, and MD of Lotus, Matt Windle. Good afternoon, everybody. So Matt, I must start with you. Congratulations on an amazing looking car. How has this week been for you? A little bit mental, if I'm honest. <laughs> we're, um, we had the launch on Tuesday at Hethel, and then we were straight down here. Uh, yeah, Monday, obviously, I think it's... Uh, but, I mean, it's so wonderful, isn't it? It's so wonderful for the company, everybody that's worked on this car to get it out here, and it's been really appreciated by the public. So, yeah, excited. And also, Lotus is the focus manufacturer for Goodwood. So, what other things has, have you been to doing and, and had going on here? So, uh, yeah, as we're in Central Marks, so we've got the uh, the display. Uh, we're doing the Lotus moments every every day at one o'clock. So, there's seven cars going up there. There's two releases via a mirror, a land. Elite, I think it's Elite. Yeah, um, so yeah, that's fantastic. So it's kind of the old to the new. Uh, and yeah, the Vi has been behaving herself up the hill. Uh, Mr. Herschel has been a bit of a hooligan in it, which everybody's been, uh, which everybody's been uh, appreciating, so it's great. Uh, yeah, it has been so good going up there. Absolutely fantastic. So, um, why the name Emira? Because there's always a story behind the names of your cars. Why Emira? Uh, well, it's, some languages it's like Commander, um, uh, and in other languages it was actually the pretty one. Um, so we thought it's a, it's a beautiful car, but it's, it's commanding as well, so that's how we ended up with the mirror. And you have to have an E at the start, don't you? Of really? course. Do you just have a special book at Lotus that's got just E's, like everything else in the alphabet is just taken out? We do actually have a naming committee. A naming committee? I've always wanted to be on the naming committee. <laughs> I'm on that one. Um, what do you do? Do you go and have a few jars and come up with some bonkers names, or do you sit down at, uh, for a day? It's a secret, we can't tell you. Oh, no, please, please tell me, I'm so desperate to know. <laughs> um, so, Russell, tell us about the styling of this car. You are the design guru. I have to be a bit careful because the design team is standing here, so uh, they'll find out any uh, false secrets in here. But uh, yeah, the, the intention with this car was to, to design a car that has the sort of glamour, the drama of a supercar, but offer it at the price of a more affordable vehicle. Compact, usable, high quality, all those things. And it's proven into work, it's working, because people have been putting deposits down. Which is fantastic. You have had a phenomenal response, I know. Can you tell us what the price is and what the engine is? So the car will start just about £60,000. The first year will be a little bit more than that because there's a launch spec. There's two engine choices, so you've got a V6, um, and then there's a two litre from AMG, which everyone's very excited about as well. So, can you tell us, from the nose through to the tail, your design cues, and it's, I know a bit of Ivaya. You need to do your walk around. Oh, that's how well. Yeah, I'm going to fall over if I walk around. I know, that's why we might need to do it here. <laughs> Matt, can you tell us what the engine is? Yeah, so the engine is a V6 with a I said it was a supercar that we wanted to create, and the obvious thing is we've taken a lot of influences from the Avaya, which we've been talking about. And when you look at the car, probably starting from the back, because most of you can see the back first of all, but you can see a clear similarity to the Avaya there, a very broad, muscular car, uh, I would say it looks like Matt, uh, tapering cabin, um, and then these great, oh, we'll walk on this now. These exit vents on the back, which are different from a Via. The Via they're to do with drag reduction. On this car, they're to take the pressure out of the wheel envelope, which offsets the, the lift, which would normally be created. Nice touches when you see the car from the back. Oh, you can see on the V6, you can see the engine through the uh, tailgate, which is nice as this is our last internal combustion engine, so we're really celebrating that. And the tailpipes, not on this car because this is a, a development vehicle, but there's some nice finishing on the tailpipes as well. All the perforations are shaped like the centre of the Lotus badge. So uh, if you're a uh, cleaning nerd, 
like Dan, our designer, you'll appreciate that. So uh, nice touch there. From the front, from the front, there's a real clear link with the wire as well. These boomerang-shaped vents. And what we do is we uh, ingest here through here, goes through the radiator, and then they evacuate through there. So it's a very distinctive signature, very elegant looking, I think, but it helps create downforce. And this car is unusual in the car, in its class, and it creates downforce. Most cars generate a little bit of lift or, or neutral. So really important for us because driving dynamics is obviously one of our cooling cards, and obviously downforce uh, enables us to go around corners quicker, which is really important. So um, yeah, and obviously on the side, one last thing on the side. We've got this uh, really distinctive uh, amount of sculpture on there for the, a car in this class. And part of that is to create a character, make the car look muscular, athletic, Matt again, um, which is the way it, yeah, it's you know, it's got feels the to drive. But it yeah. also catches the air and, and ducks the air into the engine intake. So it's a form and function. And everything we do, we always think about form and function because that's Lotus history. Beautiful racing cars in the 50s, 60s, 70s, but were beautiful to look at and technically really advanced and that's what we still try and capture in our road cars. Could you help me open the door and then we can look at the inside? You, you really want me to fall over now, don't you? I'll, I'll, I'll let's have a look from the driver's seat. side. So I can walk the other way. Can we hold it? Alright. I'm going to actually. We're pretty good. So it's quite a departure from our current range of vehicles when you get inside the car. In the one of the key things with this vehicle is not only to be glamorous to look at, but it's also sort of everyday usability. So design theme starts with a very strong characteristic of this line that runs off the armrest and goes into the IP, references the street. Um, it gives you a sense that you're sitting within the car because it's really important that you feel like you're wearing the car when you drive our vehicle. But then also really important is the usability. So storage space, uh, latest technology in terms of TFTs, etc. And believe it or not, uh, we've even got cup holders in there as well, so. A good friend of mine said, just because I drive a sports car doesn't mean to say I don't ever, ever drink coffee, so we, we, we've answered his question there. When you come to designing a cup holder, is there a standard size? We have all kinds of little test references of different cup sizes, so yeah, we go through that. So uh, the team, we work on all that sort of thing, bringing all the models and we have to meet those criteria. So one thing that Lotus is, is the plural ever low tie? No, it's always Lotus. It's just, no, it's just Lotus. Ah, the well, plural I have a Lotus, lot of Lotus, Lotus. Is like, oh, I've got many Lotus. 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 Many Lotus. Lotus. Yeah. Like sheep. Yes, like sheep. One sheep, two sheep. Okay, <laughs> that's played that one up. <laughs> Thank you for teaching me today. Um, God, I I've lost my train of thought now. I don't even know what I'm going to say. But yeah, when you, yes, yes, the seats, the seats, your seats, Lotus seats are phenomenal. No matter what Lotus I have driven, you have thin, quite thin seats, but the support is phenomenal. How do you go about doing that? Well, it's obviously key that we get the seat right because it's your connection with the car. And as I say, you want to feel like you're wearing the car. It yeah. should be like an extension of your body. So, uh, well, we get there, don't we, by a lot of hard work, basically, and we spend a lot of time tuning those to make sure they're comfortable, but they also hold you if you're going to drive it on track, for example. So. Yeah, we do a cracking job in the seats. Whoever is responsible for the seat team, well done, boys. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> um, Matt, then, tell us about the company. You're in rude health. How are things, and how is the future looking? So, uh, as you say, things are going well. Uh, we. We're under duty ownership, majority ownership now, have been since 2017. And at that point, we, we came up with our strategy for the next 10 years, which we call Vision 80, because it's going to take us to our 80th birthday. We are three years into that plan, I'm happy to say. We're on track. Um, we're delivering against where we said we were. This car is going to travel production at Hethel. So we've, we've invested 100 million in Hethel, in facilities, new factory, We've got the most modern paint shop in the world. Have you ever heard that from Lotus? So we've got a fully automated paint shop. So it's the, until somebody else does, does one, it's the most modern in the world. Um, and then the future's coming as well. So we, we've made it clear that we're going to go into different segments. We want to increase the volume. Uh, so we're calling them lifestyle cars. Other people are calling them SUVs, as you prefer. Um, 
and we're engineering those cars uh, throughout the world. We've got engineering facilities in the UK, but we've also got them in Sweden, Germany and China. Those cars will be produced in China, um, but we've confirmed that sports cars will stay at Heffel. It's the home of Heffel, and we, uh, I, can, I won't tell you what it was, but I can tell you that I was on a board call this morning, and we're going to approve the next car at the end of this year. I've got the, the thumbs up. So the next one's on the way. We've got some, we're also trying to build up Lotus Engineering, which is really important to us. And um, we're getting a lot of interest because one of the things that we decided to do was to engineer our own platforms. So this is on this is on a platform of Aya. We're going to do a, a dedicated electric sports car architecture as well. Um, so we've the the, the uh, MOU with Renault's already been announced. We're working with them, but we've got a lot of other people coming along. So we've got a lot of work on. Uh, it's very exciting, but it's the be it's the best place to work at the moment. Oh, I absolutely love to hear that. Thank you so much. Thank you for bringing the Amira. I think it looks amazing. It looks like it's going to properly drive and it's got my name written all over it. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause, please, for Russell Carr and Matt Windle. Well, you know I love the Amira, but this is the car of the show for me. We have a good few million that... Aston Martin, Valkyrie. Well, what a day and what a car. Obviously, I was mostly there to see the Amira in the flesh and I was, wow, blown away. Blown away with the looks. It has supercar looks. I mean, okay, next to the Avaya, next to it, it, it looks more of a sports car. But against comparison to even Ferraris, Porsches, McLarens, it looks a supercar. But it's at sports car prices. Okay, you don't get supercar ultimate performance, but this is a Lotus it will go around corners better than most supercars. It's a phenomenal car. I'm just so pleased and thrilled of it. And the hard work is all seem to be paying off by Lotus. I know for a fact they hit over a thousand deposits by the end of play on Friday. We we're probably looking at a 500 or so deposits from the dealers before the event. Saturday and Sunday, the event carries on. I maintain that if you want this car in 2022 in any form, you need to get your deposit in. And even then, it might be too close to call. Fabulous car. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe and like and leave a comment about what you think about the car. What colour will you get? What gearbox? Isn't it exciting? Aid out. You take care out there.